Today I've got some gorgeous spring cottage pieces for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with some little wooden cutouts. I know that you can get stuff like this at craft stores and at, at your Dollar Tree or at the thrift store, which is where I got mine. You're going to need some Mod Podge because we're going to decoupage today. And a little paintbrush. I'm going to use a lighter and then I'm going to use some napkins. And these gorgeous napkins came from Marshalls. They're beautiful. And it just screams cottage to me, definitely. What do you think? So I'm just gonna separate my pieces because I prefer to work with one piece. You have less wrinkling, just in my opinion. And then I'm gonna start laying down some Mod Podge on one of my bunnies. We will be doing this to all of them. And I just wanna make sure that I start off with a thinner layer and then get just you know, make sure that I get all of my areas. I don't want anything to come off. I'm gonna lightly lay the napkin down, just choosing which area I like with the flowers, and there's a big variety, so all the bunnies will look different. And then I'm gonna carefully pat it down and then go over it with a little more Mod Podge to seal it down to the wood. If you wanna paint the edges of your bunny a different color, you can certainly do that, but I like the wood. Um, so I'm going to leave it that way. You know, uh, I love rustic and I like the rustic cottage look. So I'm just going to cut it out. And then I saw this little trick. I think my friend Trish did this on Crafting Cousins. I wanted to try it. So this is one way that you can do it, but you better be super careful if you try it. It left a little black mark on my napkin. I don't know if it was the type of fabric or I don't know what happened, but I just went ahead and took my sanding block and sanded off those darker areas. But it surely did get a nice, close, um, almost cut, if you will. So we're gonna go on with the next one. This time, I'm gonna just do it the way that I normally do it. I've chosen another little area that I like, and it's different than the other bunny, so because the flowers are different, it's gonna give them a little bit of a different appearance, and I like that. They'll be unique. I'm gonna cut them off. My little handy dandy scissors. I got some new scissors, I'm excited about those. And then I'm gonna take my sanding block and just go downward and away on the edges all the way around the bunny to make a nice clean finish. And you can see the edges that I'm talking about. These are just natural wood. I didn't paint anything underneath. You could probably paint the whole bunny white if you wanted to really make that pattern pop. But for me, I like it this way. You can use a nail file also if you don't have a sanding block. And then just be sure that you go back over with your Mod Podge to seal in your beautiful napkin. And so here's another one. I'm going to use more yellow on this one. Place it down. Now, if you don't have these napkins, don't worry about it. Get napkins wherever you can find them. Right now, I think the spring and Easter is 40 off at Hobby Lobby. So go over there and grab you some pretty napkins, whatever style you like, whatever pattern you like. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I'd love it if you would subscribe and join my YouTube family. Okay, so you get the technique now, right? You're a pro at it. You can do this. Then you're gonna seal it. Always, always go back and seal it. And I'm just using matte, but you could use gloss or whatever one you like. Now for the tail, I started off using some little pom-poms, but then I decided, you know what? I've got some baby's breath left over, and how cute would that be to make a tail with the flowers for the cottage bunnies. And look how cute they turned out. I just used three and I kind of stacked them on top of one another. And it makes the cutest little floral tail. I think it's perfect. What do you think? You can certainly use pom-poms or whatever you like for yours. And here are my three bunnies and you see they're all different but similar. On to the next project. I am going to be using this frame that I got at the thrift store. You can get frames everywhere. Maybe you have some farmhouse stuff that you want to transition to cottage. Go grab it and let's fix it up. So I'm going to use this. This is like a plasticky cover that you can use to give you some privacy on your windows. I'm going to use it so that I can make not a stained glass, but an etched glass look. So I'm going to cut out the amount that I need, peel off the backing carefully. This is the first time I've ever done this. I really was not sure where to go with this. So I thought at first, all right, well, let's use some hot glue to stick it down because I don't want the sticky side forward because then it would get dirty, right? And everything would stick to it, it would be dusty. You want the side down that, 
the sticky side up. So it's facing me. It's sticking to my fingers, essentially. But the hot glue was kind of melting that that vinyl or plastic, whatever that is. So I thought, well, let's just use some popsicle sticks and the stapler and staple it down to secure it. And that did the trick. Still have my hot glue under there, but for more security, I didn't want to pull it loose. It was kind of melted. So I want to, you know, just give it some more security so it wouldn't come off. And I went ahead and did that on that end. And then on this end, I just used it without the glue. Pull it straight, make sure that it's wide enough for your panes, just like this. And don't lay it down, because everything's gonna stick to it. But I'm gonna fix it. So I'm gonna use a sheet of plastic, and this actually came off of a big poster board cutout thing that I bought on Hobby Lobby's uh, clearance sale. And I'm gonna use it here. And put this clear plastic down, and it's gonna keep your backing from having anything stick to it and you can still see through it. You wouldn't want to use paper because then you wouldn't be able to see through it and we want to be able to see. So I'm going to take my scissors and just trim off all of the extra plastic here and then just to make it look nice and neat I'm going to take some of my scotch tape and go over the edges so that none of this peels off. I started off using masking tape but then it just looked bad because it was white, you know? Okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like so far. And I like it. I think this is good. Now, I'm going to take one of these flower market cans from Dollar Tree. I think there's three different sizes, but I just bought the one size. I'm going to decide where I want to place it on my frame. And then I'm going to take one of my little tools here from Dollar Tree. I think it's some type of like a carving set or something. There's several tools in there. I'm going to make some holes that are about the width of the crossbars on my window. And I'm gonna fix them on both sides so that they're wide enough for my zip tie to go through. You see there? If you don't have zip ties to attach your projects, you could always use some type of a glue or wire, floor wire, something like that. So now I'm deciding where I wanna put it. I like it there. So I'm, go I'm gonna get my zip tie, go through the hole on the back, and because we didn't glue anything down to the crossbars, I can just slide it right underneath and into that bucket. This makes a nice little way to embellish this window and maybe I don't wanna use the flower market for later in the year. Maybe I wanna use a, you know, a tin can or something there later or hang a wreath off of it. All I have to do is cut that off. All right. Next project, we're going to use these frames and they're about the same size. I think they're five by sevens. We're gonna stack these together to make a better frame. I'm gonna use some plaster chalk paint and of course another napkin. This is a piece of spare cardboard. I need a backing, so I'm going to cut this out. You can skip this step if you have a backing. I'm just measuring it by the widest one on the bottom because this is gonna be the backing for the entire thing. And then I'm going to cut it out. You can cut it out a little bit smaller or to the inside of your marking lines so that it doesn't overhang and you don't have to trim down. So now I wanna make sure that I have my pattern where I like it. And then I didn't separate this napkin. It's not necessary for this project. I'm just gonna wrap it around using my tape. I'm gonna tape it to this piece of cardboard. Don't worry about the recycled cardboard that I've used here because we're gonna cover that up. It'll be nice and neat on the back, so no worries. Fold your edges under and flip it over and make it nice and neat. This is gonna help everything stay together and if you gently pull it kind of tight, you can help get the wrinkles out of your napkin or those, the seams in your napkins. Okay, so now you're gonna go over it. I'm just using my little iron here. This is my little mini press that I use with my Cricut. And then you take the rest of the little lines and wrinkles right out. How about that? Keep it moving though, you don't wanna burn anything. All right, so now we wanna attach these two together. I'm gonna to stack the smaller one on top and just go ahead and add some glue. Gotta work quickly unless you use a different type of glue. And then line those up and press those down. This is how it's going to look, but we're gonna paint it. So secure your surface, make sure nothing gets all over your table 
and then just start adding on some paint. Now I used that plaster chalk paint and I used it um, with a chippy brush just because that's what I had near me. And I just wanna add this all over here. I do two coats of this. So here you can see the second coat. Once it is dry, this is how it's gonna look. I went on the inside as well. So if you see it, you'll see nice finish. And then I wanna see how I want my bunnies to be placed in there and look the bunny's still in the picture and that's perfect that's how I wanted it so to give it a little distressing I'm going to use my sanding block I do this a lot I should have used a heavier grit but I just grabbed what I had near me so I am going to use a little bit firmer hand shortly start off doing it lightly but here you go so now you can see I'm going through and you can see the wood under there and I like the look of it I chose the plaster instead of regular white because the background on the napkin is kind of a cream color. I think it looks better together that way. But you do whatever you like. There's no right or wrong in crafting. So now I'm going to just use my stapler and just staple these down. I really recommend if you don't have a stapler that you get one to put in your crafting toolbox because they're very helpful. You can hot glue it if you'd like though. Now to cover it up, I'm just gonna use some paper that I'm recycling. You can find the links to these scissors in the description box below. They're from Arteza. It comes in a three pack and I needed some more little fussy cut scissors or small scissors. So this came in a three pack with some bigger scissors and they're really good if you're looking for some scissors. Okay, so I'm gonna put my back on now. Just use some hot glue and put this over it. I'm not concerned with it being perfect. There are some little punched out holes on the bottom back there, but nobody's gonna be looking at that when it's hung on the wall. Using a paper clip as a hanger, I'm gonna add glue to both sides and a little bit of paper to hold it down. This is how it's gonna look. I think it's so cute. Now, we're gonna take this little pedestal and it came originally from Target but I got mine at the thrift store I'm gonna use some Mod Podge to, so that we want our paint to stick better you can go ahead and spray some type of a sealer on the plastic first it'll help better in my opinion anyway so we're gonna go over with that same plaster chalk paint and go around all these little bumpy areas and every part of this pedestal now I'm going side to side with the paint and then up and down I found that's the easiest way to not ruin your brush, but to get around all of those little spaces with the dots. See, this really clings so much better, and I only had to do one coat of paint with that sealer under there. I am a very proud plaid ambassador, and I get goodies from them. So I like to try them, and I like to give you the information. So if you enjoy crafting, you might want to check out plaid. All right, so I'm going to take my little pedestal and my Mod Podge and my napkin, one layer of it, of course. I'm gonna go all over the top of this with a nice even layer of Mod Podge. I'm going to lay this napkin down gently on the top and just kind of gently, gently, gently move my fingers and hands around. I don't recommend that you pull. I did that and realized that I shouldn't have, but I didn't damage it, thankfully. And then I'm gonna use my little roller here to just press out any little wrinkles or bubbles. Now, there are going to be some wrinkles in here and I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. So here are those scissors again. I'm gonna use those to go all around my edges because I need to get close. I'm gonna cut off as close as I can get with my scissors and then I'm going to pick it up and trim it a little bit closer. I don't need all of this excess and I don't want to sand it off, but you could use your sander if you wanted. But look how nicely just going around the edges with your scissors at a slant, it makes that edge. Now I wanna start by sealing off my edges, so I'm gonna use my Mod Podge here and just make sure that I have plenty to lay that down. It is not exactly perfect. My cutting lines are not exactly perfect, but they are perfect for me. They're perfectly rustic cottage and I am good with that. Don't you just love what you do when you're crafting? I know I do. 
I love crafting. I love creating for y'all. I love sharing, you know, ideas with y'all and, and giving you ways that you can save money while still making things that look wonderful in your home. At least I always set out to inspire you. So if you like this video and these creations, I would appreciate a thumbs up. It means so much. So here's our beautiful little bunny pedestal. Isn't it cute? It's not food safe, but you can use it as a riser for whatever you want to use. Put your decor on it or, you know, put a secured candle on it or maybe three candles would be pretty together. The little battery operated candles. I love this. Okay, now, here's what they look like together. I have my bunnies, my frame picture, there's the pedestal there, or the cake riser or cake plate, whatever you wanna call it. Here I've just taken that window and I have placed down some pretty little spring flowers. I believe in you. I tell you that, I try to tell you that every video. And I know that you can do these projects. Maybe you don't have time to do all of them. Maybe you can do one or two. It's the end of the spring season for me and we're gonna be moving into summer decor. So be sure that you subscribe so you don't miss anything. And then I can't wait for the holidays. Fall is my favorite season, so we are really gonna be having a lot of fun during the fall. Which one of these projects do you think that you would try? Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.